What's up everybody, it's Park with BI Elite. In this video, we're gonna take one of the winning reports from our most recent Power BI competition, and we're going to dissect it and just understand what the report author did to create such an amazing report. If you haven't already checked out the winning report video, make sure you do. It was the last video posted on the channel. Um, so there's not really much of an agenda for this video. I'm just gonna dive in, kind of see what we can learn. For example, this first report we're gonna look at today in this video comes from Tim Gitzels. It's an amazing report. If you haven't seen that previous video, it's super interactive. I honestly don't know how he did some of these things. Um, so I'm excited to get in here and understand you know, just some of the tricks he used. Firstly, uh, if you wanna get in touch with Tim, since he does such amazing work, uh, make sure you check out his links down here in the bottom left. Also, if you wanna download this PBIX, you can as well. Uh, the link will be down in the description. So this report, if you're not familiar with the competition we ran last month, uh, the report authors were connecting to MailChimp data. It was hosted in a SQL database over on training.bielead.com. The link to that will also be in the description if you want to connect to that data yourself and build a report yourself. Um, but yeah, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, like I said, no agenda, but I'm probably going to start with the visual uh, items here because it's super cool. So firstly, I'm just gonna kind of click around and see what I can find. So as I click on this, I see that we have a shape here. And before I mess something up, I'm going to duplicate this page. And uh, that, that's fine the way it is. So what do we have? Like if we look at this shape, oh, that's cool. Okay, so this is a shape, a uh, triangle maybe, just a, just a normal triangle. So it's a button, let me see here. So if we get rid of the shape, I'm just gonna kind of put that off to the side. So yeah, that got rid of the opening and closing. Oh, that's super interesting. I still honestly don't know what's going on here. So just a normal triangle fill state. Let me just fill it with a different color for a second. Okay, so it's just a triangle and it has a on hover. It turns into a different color. So on hover, I'm not sure that fill, oh, transparency is all the way up to 100. So default state, transparency is zero. On hover, transparency is 100. If we turn this down, it would turn orange. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really cool. So, if I understand correctly, here, let's go back. Let's actually create another duplicate. So, it's basically, here, what shape? I'm just gonna change the colors and maybe I'll understand a little bit better. So I'll make this one blue. So, it's a normal triangle. What we're talking about, what we've clicked on is this top triangle here. And on hover, We'll make it not transparent. I'll give it just a random color like pink. So it's pink on hover. Okay, so what am I missing now? So we make this transparent and then behind it, oh, okay, so it, it just goes away. It just goes away and below it looks like that. Okay, maybe that took me a little too long to figure out, but that's pretty cool. So um, let me turn this back to default state, uh, white and on hover, it doesn't really matter because it's 100% transparent. So basically when you hover over, it's transparent. So it's basically like this top one goes away and just looks like that. Oh, okay, that makes total sense. Seems more complicated than I expected it to be, but it ends up being really, really cool. So the other piece um, that I'm not sure about, he, uh, there's like this go button here. So how does the go button pop up? So let me see, oh, it's the entire thing. I guess you don't have to click on the actual go button. Oh, okay, the entire thing is a button. I was thinking like the the card flips up and then there's the go button that you click on, but you can click on the entire thing. And just to confirm that, the top shape here has the action to page navigation, postcard front. Okay, cool. Um, it's nice kind of uh, debugging this or, or demystifying what he did because it's, you know, it's really foreign to me. Um, okay, so that opens up, click go and you get over to really the only page with data on this entire report. So it's pretty small, but even this page has like a really cool postcard design. So it's kind of a good lesson in, um, there are a lot of things that can make a report great. For me, I usually lean on visuals and kind of um, bringing out more understanding of the data, but you can also lean heavily on the visual side or the um, kind of design side and just make a really appealing report that people will want to consume what you're you know, throwing at them. So this report is definitely really cool. Um, it just grabs you from the beginning. Um, there are a couple of images here. So this is just an image. Not sure where he got that, but it's a really cool transparent image that just fits here nicely. And then similarly, images around these cards. So this is just a little postcard um, kind of box here. 
or not postcard, a little stamp to go around the um, the KPIs or the, the cards. So that's cool. And one other thing that was on both tabs is page background is yellow. And then everything else, here, before I mess that up as well. So page background is yellow on all uh, on all pages. And just everything he kind of put together within uh, just a you know a little visual here. Is this a group as well? Let's see, selection. No, it's just one shape. So nothing is grouped here. So grouping would actually potentially be helpful. Um, and actually might get rid of the hover effect. So I don't, I'm not sure if grouping would be good, but um, let's see what else, if there's anything else here. Just a latest refresh timestamp. Okay, so that, that's it as far as, uh, I guess the, the tricks of the visual. Everything else seems to be pretty normal here. So I guess now we can talk about maybe some of the choices he used for visuals. Uh, well, firstly, the font. Uh, the font is very interesting. It's kind of like a, a TypeScript, like a, a typewriter kind of font. Um, if we were to come to, here, where would we see that? Let's see if we can see it on our uh, title or so. So it is the Courier New font. And, okay, so that is available out of the box in Power BI. I was thinking that might just be from a, a theme file or something, but um, I'm probably gonna start using this font. It's a really cool one. Uh, so, three visuals on the page. One, um, I guess you need kind of an understanding of the data in order to uh, really take these visuals in. Um, this is email marketing data coming from MailChimp. Uh, people subscribe to my mailing lists uh, through a couple different ways and I'll send them emails with new Power BI tips and tricks. If you want to uh, join that mailing list, make sure you check out bielead.com slash blog. Uh, but this first uh, visual here is showing my list growth over time. So I have multiple different emailing lists. The ones or the two that most people will be familiar with are the BI Elite audience. Basically, if you sign up for the blog and you want email tricks, you can sign up there like I just told you. And also the training audience. So if you sign up for our BI Elite training, you're added to the emailing list there um, so that we can send you relevant info about the training. So this visual is just kind of a basic representation of um, the list growth by month. So we see that this yellow one training audience seems to be growing the most over the months. So just kind of a, a cumulative like stacked uh, column chart just to kind of understand, well, firstly, the entire magnitude of all the lists together, but then also breaking it out. So we see um, just kind of like piece of the pie as well. So that's pretty cool. And then also I'm a huge sucker for uh, scatter charts. So this scatter chart is showing us the click versus open rates by campaign, which is interesting uh, because something like this, like this live training kind of outlier here, so I had sent an email to my live training audience, people who had signed up or really submitted a survey response for our BI Elite training, live training uh, offerings. And we see that a lot of people opened it and also clicked when I sent them an email campaign about one of the upcoming live trainings. Um, but for the most part, that's an outlier. For the most part, things kind of sit within the open rate around 30% and click rate around six would probably be around average. Um, so it's interesting to kind of be able to see the individual dots there. Um, not really feedback, but just one cool thing that you can do with scatter charts that not everyone's a, uh, aware of is to add a play axis. So if you take something from, um, I gotta figure out where all these are from, dim campaign. So if you take, uh, let's do, uh, I'd like to create a new column here. I'll just kind of mess with Tim's report here you can add something to the play axis and kind of make it cycle through. So uh, let me just do like a, a quick column here. So in our campaign date, we have date time sent. So I'm just gonna create a quick um, like month start date, which I'm literally just gonna call month start date. And kind of the quick and dirty easy way to do it is just date year of our column uh, what is date, date time sent month of that same date time sent column and just one for the first of the month it's probably a better way to do that um, I, I changed the way I do it but that's just kind of the easiest way that will always work regardless of a calendar table or anything like that so if I take my new month start date put that in play axis it just makes it a little bit more interactive and you can now click on this and kind of see over time the shifting bubbles. That's really cool. 
after that, um, just another visual. This one is showing our uh, campaign performance. So open count of the email campaign and open rate as the line. But the thing that kind of steals the show here is the report page tooltip that's formatted very nicely. And it's showing us, um, well, firstly, the name of this email campaign. This one was live training 728 2021. It shows the campaign content, which I believe is the subject line of that email or maybe the preview text of that email, something that shows up when you receive that email. And then a review of that, which is a little bit of feedback about that um, particular email campaign. So you can see my open rate was 13.1% higher than the industry average, which my industry is like consulting industry, um, but it's lower than my list average. So I sent out this email, and though it does better than most people in my industry, it's worse than my own personal average. So I'm not really sure where those industry averages come from, but it's, it's just you know MailChimp's uh, aggregated data. So it's a really nice report page tooltip. And one thing that seemingly everyone asks when I show off these reports is, how did that report author create a report page tooltip that's shaped like that? Most people think that when you create a report page tooltip, you have to make it tooltip size in order for it to work. And by default, that's kind of what most people will go for. That's not true. You can actually create a tooltip whichever size you want. So if we want to make this like super wide and not very tall, so just kind of like wide, short and fat, you can do that. So if I just create a you know one visual here, actually let's make just a line chart, date time sent, and uh, email sent, just something random. Yeah, so something like that. So if I now, um, change this up and actually let me just put a report page tooltip oh uh, before I forget so on our page make sure all you have to do to make it a tooltip is page information tooltip so the tooltip option under page information is important the page size is not important so now when we come over and we add a report page tooltip to any visual uh, from tooltip report page and that's called page one so now it's really short and, and fat. So that's that's how you do that. And um, I guess it's a little bit hidden or maybe just kind of confusing because you kind of have to check a couple different areas or the, the sizing being named tooltip is a little bit confusing, but yeah, you can do it however you want. So um, that might be a little bit or add a little bit of flexibility for, for some report authors. Other than that, I, um, I think that's about it in terms of uh, things that are uh, to talk about for this report, at least visually. Um, one thing that I'm not sure if you did, as I'm clicking on, on here, I can click on the background. Um, I'd have to check uh, on Power BI service if that's still the case. Like The way you would make sure that your users aren't able to click on the background is to you know click the maintain or order layer. So if you click on the um, if you click on the formatting options of any visual and search for like maintain, you'll see maintain or order layer. So Tim is already doing that. So if you were viewing this report online, you wouldn't have this issue or ability to click on the background. So everything's gonna stay in its order, but that's um, just good practice when you're publishing a report and uh, kind of uh, productionalizing it. Uh, you want to make sure all those maintain or order layers are checked on so you don't have visuals that kind of go on top of each other if you click on backgrounds. Um, I guess finally here, he also has a relative date slicer, which I think is a really nice touch. Relative date slicers are, are pretty nice and I think the easiest to understand for most users. So I can look at last 12 months if I want to and see it that way. So that's really cool. Um, and then I guess the last thing we'll, we'll do here, which is usually you know the first thing you check, um, the data load process. Just want to see if he did anything interesting here. So it looks like he connected to every single table in that database. It seems like probably didn't use most of them. Um, but yeah, it just looks to be pretty straightforward um, pulling of that data and then created a measure table within Power Query. Interesting. So the way he did that is he just uh, came to inner data and then clicked OK. And that'll create just an empty table. And then once his empty table was loaded in, he added his measures on here. Um, that's one way to do it, and that's how I used to do it as well. Uh, one way that I do now that seems to look a little bit better if you're being super picky is uh, I think Phil uh, Seamark 
uh, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He um, posted this you know, a while ago, and ever since, it's how I've been doing it. Um, so you can create a measure table that has just the name measure without any spaces or anything. It looks really nicely and floats to the top of your tables here. And the way you do that is you come to modeling, new table. And uh, it's kind of specific, but you have open and close brackets, space, measures, equals uh, these little curly braces, and blank. So write that down, it's a little confusing until you remember it. But the space in front of measures makes it float to the top, but it doesn't actually show that space. So once that loads, we'll have measures. Oh, it's actually just under measure table because measures is after measure table. Um, but, oh, that's interesting. Maybe, maybe there's a space in front of measures. I'm not entirely sure. Let's actually take a quick look. Measure table. Nope, there's no column there. Uh, his flows to the top as well. I won't question it. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's how I've been doing it. Um, and I think that's it. I think, uh, firstly, this is an amazing report. If I haven't said that already, super cool. Make sure you check out the winning report video if you want to, or you can interact with this report if you want to as well over on the BI Elite training website. Um, I'll also link the contest winners page down in the description below. A lot of links today. And uh, we'll be going through the other two winning reports as well, probably later this week or next week. Um, so we have two more winners to, to get through. This was a, a quicker one because there isn't too much of those reports, not too deep, but you just did so many cool things that I just really wanted to dive in and share with y'all once I figured it out. So it's really cool. Hope y'all enjoyed this style of video. Um, a lot of people have been asking like, hey, can you teach us how to create a report like this? I'm hoping that um, if we're able to kind of get through some of the, the more visual ideas, you'll be able to construct these for yourself. And also if you want to download the PPX, you can do that as well. So that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.